Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to be learning about indefinite integrals, which are also known as antiderivatives. Here's the big idea. Throughout this course, we've been finding derivatives of functions. But what if we start with the derivative and try to find the original function that it came from? When we do this, the original function is called an antiderivative. Here's an example. Suppose we have the functions y equals x squared, y equals x squared plus 4, and y equals x squared plus 99. Notice that the derivative of each of these functions is the same, y prime equals 2x. But now let's suppose we start with y prime equals 2x and we want to find y. y would equal x squared plus c, where c is any constant, because the derivative of x squared plus c equals 2x. That means x squared plus c is the antiderivative of 2x. And this brings us back to the idea of indefinite integrals. This is how we will notate antiderivatives. Let's break this down to see what's going on with this notation. This long s-shaped sign is called the integral sign. The inside of the integral is called the integrand. In this case, the integrand is little f of x dx little f of x is the derivative of the function that we're trying to find. dx is called a differential. For now, just consider this as notation that's a necessary part of the integral. You can also think of it as a symbol that signifies that we're taking the antiderivative with respect to x. Capital F of x plus c is the antiderivative of little f of x, and c is called the constant of integration. Let's do a few examples. What's the integral of x dx? What this means is that we need to find a function whose derivative is x. And the answer is x squared over 2 plus c, because the derivative of x squared over 2 plus c equals x. How about this one? What's the integral of x squared dx? And the answer is x cubed over 3 plus c, because the derivative of x cubed over 3 plus c equals x squared. This brings up a great question. How do we reverse the power rule? In other words, what's the integral of x to the n dx? Well, you may have noticed a pattern in the previous two examples. What we did was raise x to the n plus 1 power, and we divided by n plus 1, and then we added c. This is something that you'll want to memorize, because you're going to use this all the time when finding indefinite integrals. Try this example the integral of x squared plus x plus 1 dx. Well, what we need to do is find an antiderivative, and that would be x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus x plus c. Remember, on all of these problems, don't forget the plus c. How about this one, the integral of x to the 1 half dx? Well, we're going to follow the reverse power rule. We're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by that new exponent. That would give us x to the 3 halves over 3 halves plus c, which simplifies to 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. Negative exponents? No problem. Let's reverse the power rule. We're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. So the integral of x to the negative 6 dx equals x to the negative 5 over negative 5, which is the same as negative 1 over 5x to the 5th. How about this one? The integral of 5 dx. Well, again, we need to find a function whose derivative equals 5. So the answer is just 5x plus c. We can treat the integral of 5 dx as if it's 5x to the 0 dx. And then we can reverse the power rule, which would give us 5x to the 1 over 1 plus c. And that's the same thing as 5x plus c. We can also find antiderivatives of trig functions. How about this one? What's the integral of cosine x dx? Well, the antiderivative is sine x plus c because the derivative of sine x plus c equals cosine x. What about this one? What's the integral of secant squared x dx? Well, the antiderivative of secant squared x is just tan x plus c. Okay, here's one to ponder. What's the integral of 1 over x dx, which is the same thing as x to the minus 1 dx? Well, if we reverse the power rule, we're going to get x to the 0 over 0, and that doesn't make sense because we'd be dividing by 0. So instead of reversing the power rule, we just have to ask ourselves, 
is there a function whose derivative is 1 over x? And the answer is yes, that function is the natural log of x plus c. Note that in this case, we have to put absolute value bars around the x. And this is because the 1 over x function exists for positive and negative values of x. But ln of x doesn't exist for negative values of x. So by putting absolute value bars around the x, this ensures that the function can take in both negative and positive values of x. Let's look at this graphically. The green graph is y equals 1 over x, and the blue graph is y equals the natural log of the absolute value of x. Here we can see that the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x is 1 over x. Note that technically, I should have included a plus c with the natural log function. But remember, when we take the derivative, the plus c will vanish, and in this case, we'll still be left with y equals 1 over x. Now let's make some generalizations for indefinite integrals. If we have the integral of little f of x dx, that would equal capital F of x plus c, the antiderivative of little f of x. We can also change the letters. If we have the integral of little g of x dx, the antiderivative would be capital G of x plus c. So let's summarize here. In this video, we've started to look at how we could find antiderivatives of functions, and antiderivatives are also called indefinite integrals, and you always need to include plus c with antiderivatives. We've also talked about how integrals have to contain a differential. In this video, we've seen integrals with dx. Again, for the time being, let's just consider this as necessary notation. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to reverse the chain rule. In other words, suppose we have a function and the only way to take its derivative is by using the chain rule. Now, let's say we're starting with that derivative. How can we find the antiderivative? For now, keep on practicing to get used to the idea of indefinite integrals and antiderivatives. And that's how you rock calculus! Yeah.